everyone, welcome to Wicked West Books. My name is Meg West. That is my husband in the background putting gas in our truck so that we can make the trip up to Oklahoma City for the Kevin Hearn book signing. This is the only book in the Iron Druid series that we don't have signed, other than the newest one, which we didn't find a copy at um, Books A Million yesterday, so we'll probably buy it with the book he's signing today. And we've got the first book in the series that we're going to get signed queued up on my, our Audible. Technically, it's his Audible, but I use it too. But it's really, it's his. Um, so that we can at least have some idea of the book world that we are going to listen to him discuss. So, this is my very first attempt at an actual vlog video. So, let me know what works and what doesn't because I've got at least two, maybe three more book signings and a book sale going on this month and next month that's going to be kind of the style. So if I know what works and what doesn't, I can improve them. So um, I'll see you in a little bit, probably. This is one. Penguin Random House. This is one. Penguin Random House Audio presents A Plague of Giants. Book one, The Seven Kennings, by Kevin Hearn. Read for you by Luke Daniels and Exy Sands. kind of in a mall type place, which is interesting because the actual mall is across the street. Oklahoma City. Like I drew, I, I drew, I, I drove through here in 1996 and it was just sort of like, wow, there's a city there. And now, you know, uh, I never really got to, to see any of it. Um, but randomly I'm in this hotel where they, it, I guess it's a really old one downtown near the, the, the Concord or something like that. And they have all of this really old um, metal stamped stuff in their elevators and everything else. And it looks like it's a portal to an elven magic land. <laughs> and uh, I was almost like, do I, if I go in, what if I never get back, you know? Um, but it, it, it's really cool down there, um, and I like it. And uh, I've, I've enjoyed my little drive around the city. And um, Well, there's a NASA thing there, a NASA little facility. And basically the entire city is full of engineers and sci-fi fantasy nerds. It's, you know, a higher concentration of fantasy readers than you'll find in, well, anywhere else in Alabama. So, uh, so, so I, I, I basically I, I said, okay, I'll, I, I promise I will get there by the end of the series. And I went there for Scourge. I went to a, they just have a Barnes and Noble. They don't have a cool indie store like this. So I went to a Barnes and Noble there, but there was like 130 people there or something like that. So they weren't lying. There was a huge number of people there. And so I sent it to my publicist in um, in New York. And he's like, there's that many people in Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, see, you gotta. You gotta go, man. You gotta get out of get out, get out of New York, you know. Uh, so this is why I like uh, coming around and visiting folks, uh, you know, in, in different spots, just because. First of all, people are cool wherever you go, and uh, second, I get to see new things, and uh, then I get inspired, and then you wind up being in a story of mine later on, you know. That's how it works. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, my epic fantasy series, uh, if that's cool with you guys, since that's what yeah. I'm supposed to be promoting. Um, and then uh, I will. I do have some Iron Druid news for you too. Um, a little bit about uh, where's my books? You guys got one? Okay. Yay! Thank you. I appreciate it. If you all turn to your pick now. <laughs> By the way, I did. I actually drew the map. You drew the map. Well done. Man, I, I was an art major before I was an English major and before I was an author. So we had a we commissioned an artist to uh, do the portraits in the beginning of the book to help you keep track of them all. And uh, her name is Yvonne Gilbert. She's just done a wonderful, wonderful job, and I love these things so much. Um, but uh, what you'll notice is that, uh, or I hope you'll notice, is that I am 
writing an epic fantasy with 11 different first person points of view in A Plague of Giants, and there's 12 in here. And uh, to my knowledge, that has not been done before. I was really trying something sort of experimental in terms of structure. The reason I was, uh, there's a couple of reasons actually I was wanting to do it this way. One is uh, from my years of teaching English, I really you know, enjoyed the Iliad and the Odyssey, and the Aeneid, and just the idea of a bard performing each night, giving you know whoever's there around the hearth a, uh, a new chapter in the epic uh, that he was telling, and uh, with some music and using heroic couplets and whatever. And I wanted to try to see, you know, can we bring that experience to modern audiences and prose somehow by using a bard to tell the story of an actual epic war. And so that was part of the, the reason why I approached it the way I did, where we have a bard whose magical ability is to take on the likeness and voice of anybody he's met. So um, he's then able to tell stories in first person. So that was part of the reason I did it. And the other was uh, watching the Olympics. Does anybody like watching the Olympics besides me? Yeah. A few of you here and there? Yeah. That's cool. Uh, one of the things I like about it, besides the actual events, though, is when they do those fun little personal stories. You know, about Sally Bag of Donuts got up every morning in Tulsa at 5 a.m. to go down to the swimming pool after she, you know, did whatever chores she had. They always make it really tough. And uh, but but by the time you're, they're telling the story, done telling the story of Sa Sally Bag of Donuts, you are rooting for her so hard. Uh, before she ever dives into the pool or whatever event she does. And then you hear about some kid in Montana or another one in New York and Florida and whatever. And how many different people are in it and how they all have these dreams and they're all pursuing them at the same time. And we get so caught up in our tiny little worlds in our local area that we don't often think about how <coughs> huge it is and how many dreams are out there and how everybody's pursuing them. And how everybody's also dealing with a lot of a lot of stuff, right? A lot of problems. And so uh, what I noticed in reading a lot of epic fantasy was that you usually hear from the same few sorts of characters. You've got a leader somehow, maybe a king or a queen or something like that. There's often a warrior figure of some sort. There might be a farm boy or a farm girl who has been, you know, slaving away, cleaning out the stables or whatever like that. And then suddenly an old wizard comes and tells him, no, secretly, you're the nephew of the king or something like that. You know, there's a prophecy about you, etc. So they, they follow the same sorts of patterns. And what I was noticing is you don't see just normal people. Normal people get involved in wars, often without their choice. And, and so how do they deal with that when the war comes to them? They don't have a choice uh, in dealing with it. They have to deal with it somehow. They've got to survive. And so uh, part of the... My, my uh, part of what I would have wanted to do here was to uh, show you some narrators and some people who are dealing with things beyond their control, events way beyond their control, and how do they try to get a little bit of control over their own lives back. So um, there you go. That's that's kind of what I'm trying to achieve with all this stuff, and there will be a third one of these. There's It is a trilogy. The third one's called The Curse of Krakens. So... <laughs> Once I realized Luke would do the rest of my series, I started messing with him on purpose. Because <laughs> I knew he could handle it, but he also liked the challenge. He would sit there and he would like write me a little bit and say, you bastard. Because <laughs> I, I would, um, I, like there's one part where Granny Whale's running across Poland and I could have picked any path at all for her to go through. But I looked on the map and I chose the city that she had to run through that was all continents. <laughs> Just on purpose. A bunch of C's and C's and stuff like that. And, and, and so I'm like, have fun with that one, Luke. He says, God damn it. <laughs> so that was great. Um, so yeah, I do, I do uh, some things. But, but also it means that because he's so talented, I can also do some things. It frees me up to do some things that I wouldn't be able to do otherwise if it was a different narrator, if that makes sense. Um, like Ink and Sigil set in Glasgow. And uh, then you have also have the Irish uh, Tua de Danon, and then there will be parts in Australia. Those are all very distinct accents, and he can do them. And even in Scotland, the Glasgow accent is different from the Edinburgh accent, and those cities are only 50 miles apart. But uh, the, Ouija, the Glaswegian or Ouija accent is almost incomprehensible sometimes to, well, basically all other humans. Uh, but you, you do get used to it once you stay there for a while. I stayed there for 10 days and I was, I was getting along pretty good by the end of it. 
but when we first flew in and had that first taxi ride, the taxi, the you know, the cab driver would say stuff, and then my wife and I would just look at each other like, "Did you, did you get that?" We, we knew it was English, but just barely. And, uh, and, 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 and then we started, we just felt so bad, you know. I'm sorry, could you say that again, like really slow for the dumb Americans? And, 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 and so he did. And he was cool like that, but we eventually did pick it up. Um, like how does he pronounce things and so on? Uh, what I what usually happens is a director calls me. There's actually an audiobook director. They give me a call. In fact, for Blind of Black Queens, there's this huge list of names and things we go through, and and other nouns, you know. And I spent two and a half to three hours on the phone with her, just pronouncing everything, and she would take notes, and then she relays that both to Luke and to Exy. So that's how that gets done. But I don't tell them how to sing the songs or anything. Like the research for Rome was fantastic because I had to figure out where in Rome would the vampires be hanging out. So when I was scheduling the, the trip, I had to get a, like a tour guide, like a little personal tour guide, because if you take one of those group tours, you're not, you're not going to get what you want, right? So uh, if you have a personal tour, then you can basically customize it. <laughs> so they hooked me up with this lady who was like an expert in archaeology and all this cool stuff, and I thought, oh cool, this is going to be awesome. And so I told her, you know, she gets on the phone with me, and she's got this wonderful, charming Italian accent and everything, so I'm assuming you'd like to see the Vatican. I'm like, no, that's not where the vampires are. And she goes, <laughs> and, so, and so she's like, what? And she, you know, and then she goes, ha, ha, because she thought I'm joking. <laughs> and, and I'm like, no, see, I need, I need to know where the vampires are in Rome because I'm, I'm actually doing research for a novel. I need to figure out a, a you know, a plausible place where they would open you know, own property and prey on humans and stuff like that. She says, I'm going to have to get back to you. <laughs> and I thought that was just a polite way of saying she would never get back to me <laughs> because I thought she would just, you know, never call back. But it turns out what she was doing, she had to talk about it with her priest first. She wanted to get permission to do this so she wouldn't be sinning by talking about evil with me. And uh, that was cool. The priest said, go for it. And so she called me back, and then she was on board, man. She, she was like, this is the coolest job I've ever had. Because usually people do just want to go see the Vatican, and I've been there a thousand times, but I've never searched out where the vampires are. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. Are we ready to sign some books? Yeah, oh, anybody else? okay. Okay, wow, that's dark in here. Um, so we just got done with the book signing. Don't keep walking. <laughs> so we're going to... Head over to Anna Urban to eat. Don't have one in Tulsa that is as good as the ones that are up here, so we're gonna go get our burgers. So, with this horrible lighting, I'm gonna finish the vlog while my husband drives. No worries, not vlogging myself and driving. And just show you what we ended up buying. So, we got a paperback copy of A Plague of Giants by Kevin Hearn, which is, of course, the first book in the series. This is what we listened to on the drive up. It's got this nice, lovely signature that actually looks like a name in here, so that's fun. We got the book that was for this book signing, which is A Blight of Black Wings. So, it's very pretty and it's got. Well, it's got a signature, but apparently he drew the map himself, which you probably already know from whatever I decided to edit and put in from his speech earlier, as well as the fact that it actually does have portraits and a short little bio information for all of the characters that tell their own story in the series, which I imagine is immensely helpful. We also got staked sign, and while I was waiting in line, I found this, the German language book, which uh, has the words in German, what they mean, and it's spelled out phonetically in English. So just this random page, you have pork, which is schwein, and a pronunciation, salmon, which is apparently lachs has spelled out phonetically in English and I just thought this was way too cool and 
I wanted it. And look, oh, hey, coffee. So yeah, that is how the day went. And as soon as we get home, I'm going to just wash off all of this makeup and probably go to bed because I'm exhausted. So that is how our day went. And that is all that there is for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already. I post videos every Wednesday. Have a wicked day.